Hey, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share a book haul with you guys. Uh, the majority of these books are books that I got for Christmas from my lovely family. Uh, and then there are a few that I got for myself because I wanted to treat myself. <laughs> so let's just dive in. So the first two books I'm going to talk about are books that I picked up for myself. I had intended to read at least one of these um, in December, like around Christmas time, because they are Christmas themed books, but I didn't get to them. Uh, the first one is called The Christmas Sisters by Sarah Morgan, and this is about um, a family where there's three sisters and they're kind of like dealing with their own lives and their own kind of dramas and they're getting together for Christmas with their mother. And so... It's going to deal with, I'm sure, like family drama and secrets around Christmas time. So I thought that that sounded pretty good. And I actually heard about this author from Amber uh, over at Amber Eats Books on Instagram. She's read quite a few of this author's like Christmas books and really liked them. So I feel like I feel like I'm going to like this one, too. And then the other Christmas book I picked up is The Christmas Dress by Courtney Cole. And this is about a young woman who goes back to her father's apartment building like he owned and operated an apartment building he passes away so she sort of inherits it and has to kind of take care of things and it's a lot of work um the place is sort of run down uh she's sort of abandoning her dreams um working in the fashion industry to sort of take over this place and so you kind of have her story on the one side and then on the other side there is one of the tenants that live in the building is an older woman whose name is Ellie, and she is uh, about to be moving out of the apartment complex because she's moving into a nursing home, and so she's downsizing her items, and she has this dress that she has kept for years and years that she has always saved because it was like something that symbolized the best day of her life and also the worst day of her life. And then her and the young woman, whose name I don't think I mentioned, her name is Meg, they sort of form a friendship and she decides to give her the dress. But the, the stipulation is that she has to wear the dress at the apartment complex's Christmas party. So it seems like it's gonna have a little bit of like the dual timeline thing because I have a feeling it's gonna kind of go back to when Ellie was younger maybe. So I, I feel like it's gonna have kind of maybe a historical feel, but also, you know, the Christmas feels. <laughs> and honestly, I picked this up because the um, the cover was just, was just speaking to me. So that's it. Those are the Christmas books I got. The next few books in my stack are books I got for Christmas from my family. Um, and they were all books that I had on my wish list. <laughs> so my husband did a great job. Um, the first one that he picked up for me is Planet Earth is Blue by Nicole... Pantale Pantalikos. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, this is a middle grade book about a young girl whose name is, not Bridget, no Nova. And she is, it takes place in the 80s um, before the Challenger launch was, was set to happen. And she is really excited about that. And her, she somehow gets separated from her sister and she is in a foster situation. Uh, so she is contemplating, you know, the, the big Challenger launch and also, like, trying to get back to her sister. And uh, Nova is also autistic. So it kind of deals with that, too. I've just heard really good things about this book, um, that it's a great middle grade. And I hope that um, I will read it and I will pass it on to Leia. The next one my husband got me is one I don't know anything about the plot. I can't tell you anything in the back also doesn't really tell you anything. This was a total like, I put it on my list because I've read from this author before and <laughs> their stuff is really good. And that is You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. So I have read, things have gotten worse since we last spoke and last year's release, uh, we can never leave this place. And so this book, when I heard about it, I was like, I don't even care what it's about. I'm, I know it's gonna be, Balls to the wall crazy. It's going to be a great horror novel. It's going to go places that I won't expect and I just want to read it. So I think it has to do 
I think it, it there's like two main characters and one of them is a writer and so there's like a book within a book or something that's like all I really know about this I can't I, I don't know and I don't care I'm gonna read it I'm, I'm just gonna read it and then he picked me up a nonfiction book um, that I have been wanting to read since Leia was a toddler so I'm way past due to read this book, but it's called The Opposite of Spoiled, Raising Kids Who Are Grounded, Generous, and Smart About Money by Ron Lieber. And this is, yeah, basically a nonfiction book about how to talk to your kids about money and finances. It, it also in some ways is a guidebook on how to teach them about finances. Like it talks about allowances and chores and part-time jobs and like all that kind of stuff. I think even the tooth fairy. <laughs> and this is just something that like, it's a topic that, you know, I am very interested in, especially now my kids are eight and five and, you know, my husband and I have tried the whole allowance thing and we just feel like we need to do more research on it. We need to tweak it because we weren't really happy with how it was going um, because we do want the kids to learn about money and how to manage their money, you know, so that they can be like responsible adults <laughs> with their money when they are grown up. So I think this is a good place to start. Um, so I hopefully will be reading this book soon because like I said, it's been on my to read list forever. And then he picked me up another nonfiction book called As Long As Grass Grows, The Ind Indigenous Fight for Environmental Justice from Colonization to Standing Rock by Dina Gilio Whitaker. And this one is, yeah, it's about basically environmental justice, um, but through an indigenous lens um, and so this is one that I, I feel like I, I heard somebody else talk about this book and said it was really good but I can't remember who and that's why I put it on my list um, it's a topic that I don't know anything about honestly and I want to know more so I'm gonna read it and then the last one he picked up for me is one that is not a typical book I would read but I put it on my list for two reasons um, but first let me tell you what the book is. It is Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. And this is a YA, I want to say it's a teen romance, guys. <laughs> I picked, I put this on my list for two reasons. One, it's about dance. If, the, if there's a book and it's about dance, I will read it because I love dance. And this one centers around a young girl who starts taking ballroom lessons and then she meets a boy there and they kind of fall for each other. So... <laughs> And I don't think I've ever read a book that dealt with ballroom dance. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Um, and then also, I have read The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon, and I actually enjoyed it. I, I picked that book up because I was reading it for a book club. So I don't think otherwise I would have picked it up, but I did, and I read it, and I liked it. So, so yeah, I want to give this one a try. Oh, here comes Juno, like she always does. How you doing, girl? So yeah, even though this isn't a book I would typically read, I am looking forward to checking it out. All right, then the last four books I got, I got when Barnes & Noble had their 50% off all hardcover sale the day after Christmas. I totally went there <laughs> and spent some time browsing and I picked up four books. Uh, the first one is an anticipated release that I, I think I put it on my was it my fall releases or winter releases? Because I can't remember when this actually came out. But um, this is Liberation Day by George Saunders. And this is a short story collection. And I picked this up because, and wanted to read it, because I read George Saunders' book, uh, 10th of December, which was another short story collection. And I actually really enjoyed it. I really liked his writing. Um, he also wrote another little book called Fox 8 that I also really liked. So... I don't know anything about like what any of these stories are about or any anything like that. It just has nine stories in it and I want to read it because I just love his short fiction. And then this other one, the next one I picked up is another one that was on an anticipated uh, list and that is Celeste Ng's new book, Our Missing Hearts. And this one I wanted to read because I've read Celeste Ng's other two books and really liked them. And this one also seems like it has a coming of age element because it's about a 12 year old boy who is... I think he's, he goes on some sort of quest trying to find, I don't know if he's trying to find his mother or trying to find information about his mother, something like that. Um, and I've heard that this like, yeah, it just deals a lot with like libraries and research and books and information and basically how important and precious those things are uh, to like humanity and to memory and everything. And I just want to read it. So I, I, I got it for 50% off. I had to pick it up. And then this, this next one is another one that was an anticipated read. I think it came out about a year ago though. It came out last year 
and I put it on my list and I haven't gotten around to it, but now I have a book copy, so I hopefully we'll read it soon, and that is Violetta by Isabella Lende. And this one um, interested me because it is about a woman, Violetta, who is uh, born in 1920 during the um, flu epidemic at the time and lives a hundred years and so you kind of follow her through her life and all the things that happen <laughs> between 1920 and 2020 and we also know that 2020 had a pandemic and so at the end of her life she's also experiencing a pandemic and I believe this takes place oh where does it take place um it doesn't say at least I'm not seeing it right now um somewhere in South America. So yeah, this this still is just really intriguing to me and I can't wait to read it. And then the last book that I picked up from Barnes & Noble during their sale was totally because of Jesse over at Bowties and Books. They did a vlog, um, it was right around Christmas time, and they read this book and said that it was the scariest book they had ever read. They had to put it down at night because it was so scary, they couldn't handle it. And so immediately I was like, okay, I want to read that. And then when I was at Barnes and Noble, there it was. So I was like, I, I have to pick this up because Jesse said so. And that is The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. And this one deals with a woman who moves into this new, this house with her son. Um, I think it was like an estate that was like in her family and she somehow inherits it or something. And yeah, they move into the house and it's haunted. Ah, so again, you know, haunted house, that's my thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely wanna read this as soon as possible. All right guys, so those are the books I have collected recently. Um, please let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Um, or if there are any that I need to read like today, please let me know. And let me know if you've picked up any books lately. Did you pick up anything at the Barnes & Noble 50% off hardcover sale? Um, because that's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good deal. So I'm sure a lot of us <laughs> took advantage of it. So other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.